difference between stand-up and doing a TV show is huge. When I was a stand-up, I was never starting my day at 5.30 in the morning, you know? So every time I'm driving out here at 5 or 6 in the morning, I always it always hits home how, how much my life has changed from when I was a comic. I've always enjoyed making people laugh. You know, as a kid, I tried to be funny with my buddies, and I tried to be funny with my family, and there was a lot of laughs growing up. You, you know the feeling if you told a joke at work and it gets laughed. It's a good feeling, right? It's a good way to make a buck. No heavy lifting. I'm very proud of what Corner Gas has become and, and what it did. You know, we were just making a show, just trying to have a good time, and uh, we didn't expect a million people to watch. Diction is very important to the actor. And, and cut. It's a good. Wow, good. that felt pretty good. It sounds like such a cliche, we want to go out on top. It's very hard to do. I mean, who would have thought that the biggest hit in Canadian television would be about this gas station and this coffee shop and this, you know, wrapped around this wonderful comedian? And I don't know if we'll ever have an experience like this again. I guess I'm retired now. Finally get a chance to sit back and read some comic books. Yeah, take a few years off. Then get yourself a green hat and start being cranky to people. We're coming down to the end of it now, you know. I don't know if you got the memo. It's all wrapping up. Yeah. Um, it's been six years that I, I don't think any of us expected. Because when you hear sitcom in Saskatchewan, you don't think, well, how can this miss, right? A Canadian sitcom called Corner Gas in Regina. I, could, I just went, oh, God. And then I read the script, and I laughed so hard. I couldn't believe it. I just thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it was one of the best, I mean, uh, as far as, you know, scripts you usually get. It was really a good script. <laughs> I think everything that needs to be in here is in here. Yeah, this is all, you can't write this. Oh, hang on, here's right here. Because of this last script, has homage elements to it. <laughs> That's what we're saying this we is. Can, yeah, we can rehash things. And then Hank looking out the window and saying, shut up everybody, here he comes. Oh wait, that's not him. And then they go back and then Brent walks in. That's <laughs> <laughs> like the reverse surprise part. <laughs> I'll make him pee into a cup every day if I have to. Do you know how to do those drug tests? Oh, I just meant if we were on a long road trip and you had to go, I wouldn't have to hold it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the way it plays out now in the script, it feels like a day in Dog River, and there's been some typical kind of misunderstanding and people blowing, making too much out of something and all that kind of stuff. So the long and the short of it is, I think the script is in really good shape. Putting together the final script, there was some pressure, because it is the culmination of this crazy thing that was corner gas. So it was a fine, it was a tightrope to walk, to make it kind of a normal everyday episode, but have an air of specialness to it. There is a youthful, eternally youthful quality to David. Oh, yeah. He's childlike in a lot of ways. He is innocent, very excitable. I like, I like that. You know, he gets excited, honestly, about everything. And, um, and that was my biggest fear after season one was that I didn't want uh, police forces across the country thinking I was making fun of them. There was you know, not, not anything near my mind. So, But uh, to, to get that response, getting a police chief sidling up to me and going, you know that character you're playing? I'm going, yeah. <laughs> Really good, really, really funny. Reminds me of a couple of guys I work with. <laughs> well, when you were looking at the character of Hank Yarbo, what did he tell you? Is there anything that stood out in the character? Yeah, he, he said, I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid and honest. And I'm honestly stupid. There is an honesty to Hank. There is, and that's actually what I like most about Hank is how honest he is. Do you have any thoughts about maybe uh, what you uh, hope? Is in store for Hank in the final episode, or any thoughts? Um, I guess I, I, something big happening to Hank would would be upsetting in a way, because it wouldn't be the same, right? I think one of the, my favorite uh, moments was that scene with Farrell. You know, like, I'm sitting there reading the comment. Hey, Hank, this guy says Saskatchewan is flat. How do you mean? Topographically, I guess. Says there's nothing to see. There's lots to see. There's nothing to block your view. So that's the image I have of Hank, just him just sitting there like, you know, he's still there, still hanging at the register, still, you know, having a coffee. That's what I see.
What are your favorite moments of, of Lacey? And One of the ones that came to mind right away was the hockey episode. First of all, I loved coaching, and I also loved the scene with um, you and I where I'm saying, why, like, why can't I coach? And you're like, um... This makes no sense. Why are the guys so against me being the coach? Well, I'm not sure. Let's ask your penis. Excuse me, Lacey's penis. What the? You don't have one. Oh, you can't be serious. I'm serious. I didn't see one. They don't want me to coach because I'm a woman? I remember thinking, that's, that's got to be as edgy as a show ever gets. Even, even the notion of doing that was, there was like, I don't know. <laughs> is something we should do? It struck me as very funny, and then I thought, well, no harm comes from it. Right? Yeah. It was a funny moment, I think. That was, yeah, one of my favorites. You know, so much of the acting thing was new to me coming into this, being a nightclub comic. Acting wasn't, you know, building a character and all those kind of things. And how much of the character, Emma, was revealed to you on the page versus how much, you know, you put into it? I like playing Emma, but she's a lot like me, only not suicidal. <laughs> and uh, the reason I like Emma so much is that she's kind of happy. I mean, she puts up with... Like, if I lived with someone like that... You wouldn't live with someone I wouldn't, like that. no. The Oscar character, when you read him on the page, did you figure you knew this chap? Well, in, in a to a certain extent, yeah. I mean, I thought I, I, I did. I mean, it seemed... I mean, I was desperate to have the part because I was from here. <laughs> uh -huh. I thought, how could I, I live with myself? If they did this show in Saskatchewan, and I wasn't the guy that would play to Oscar. I'd have to, I don't know, emigrate to Newfoundland or something. You know, I'd have to change provinces. What's it been like for you personally being part of something that, you know, is watched nationwide, wherever you go, a lot of people like the show, fans of the show. What's that been like for you personally as you go about your daily life of being Tara? I forget that when people see me, they're like, oh my God, you're, you know, I, I, I don't make that connection. I'm always like, what, do, are we friends? Did we go to school? I don't understand. Who are you? But I love what I do. I love coming to work and I be, have, doing this character and having fun. And then it's weird because every once in a while when I see an episode, so many different memories come flooding back to me. And it's just really cool that I know 20 years from now when I watch an episode, something's going to come rushing back to me about that time. And it's going to be, you know, 107 different, different times. And to share that with, you know, my kids, my grandkids, I think that's, you know. I didn't even know you had grandkids. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I aged really well. Was there a moment when you maybe thought, uh, we're onto something here? This. This might be uh, something. I'm sure a lot of the other cast members probably said the same thing. It was the first read-through. It just, the first read-through was fantastic. It was everybody was clicking and all the jokes were working and the chemistry with the ensemble, I think, was there immediately. So it was pretty exciting. But it's one of those things, you, you finish the read and you go, well, you know, we hope Canada likes it because we think it's pretty good, but you never know. Now, I understand this is the final read-through. We've seen 106 great performances, and we look forward to the 107th here. So, let's read. And interior, the ruby day. Did you guys see The Howler? So it's Fast Exit is doing a reunion tour. Well, the read-through is the moment when we all sit down and read the script for the first time as actors. People always say I'm funny. I, I guess you get that from me. Working towards retirement, living the hell we all lived. <laughs> you don't get it from her. You're both fountains of inspiration. I've thought a lot about these characters over the last seven years. I mean, if you include the year leading up to the first season of Corner Gas, I'm going to miss writing these characters a lot. I mean, these characters are, uh, uh, they've become a huge part of me. Yeah, never a dull moment. <laughs> As we freeze and fade out. Yeah. All right. Thanks. See you next season, everybody. <laughs> So I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody uh, who was involved in this, everybody who spent one minute helping to turn this show into, into what it became, and uh, thanks very much. You're going to go right through the set. You're going to be able to sit down at the Ruby, and you can take as many pictures as you want.
you guys should be very excited. This is the very last tour for the entire series. So if you guys are the last tour that gets the personalized tour with the wonderful cook on the inside. Come on in. Let's see what's cooking. We only have one permanent set in here, and that's Karen and Davis's cop shop. Welcome to the Ruby. This is the one where everybody's all like, now it starts to look real. Did you get it? Yep. This is as close to famous as I've ever been. And people are really quite sweet. They're not, aren't they? Yeah. You don't. You like it more than I do. I, I love it. Yeah, I know. And I also, as an actor, the the identification with Oscar is a character that could live outside of the, you know, that's recognizable to a real world. One, two, three, jackass. <laughs> and jackass, of course, they love that word. Who is that? I don't know. Some jackass, 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 jackass. Yeah, jackass. Jackass is my thing. I hope it's remembered as just a good, solid comedy that anybody in the family could sit down and watch and, and have a chuckle with, whether it's your kids or your grandparents or your moms and dads, and you're all sitting there enjoying it together. I think that's something that I know I'm, I'm proud of. Yeah. Well, there'll be reruns forever. Yeah. How do you think people will remember the show? God, that Karen, she was so hot. She was hot. <laughs> And you know, I want people to be like corner gas and they go, oh my God, remember that episode when? And like go right into it. I think that's the, the biggest compliment you could ever get. If that's the legacy, I'll take it. Okay, it's yours. Jackass! I was too busy posing. It's going to look good. <laughs> it's hard to go anywhere now without being stopped. But it's such a great thing because people stop and say, thanks for the laughs. And uh, that just makes me feel good. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> We're from Kentville, Nova Scotia, and we just love Corner Gas. We're from Sterling, Alberta, and we, we love Corner gas. gas. You flew in from Ottawa, and Liam, who just turned 10, had a Corner Gas birthday. I've watched every single episode in the entire Corner Gas series at least twice. Uh, more, oh, than twice. <laughs> more than twice. Uh, I know a lot of people feel very, very close to the characters and to our town, um, so I hope that yeah, that we, I mean, I, th I think it's a great honor to be a part of people's family and their hearts, and I hope that we stay there. Yeah. We're huge Corner Gas fans, and it was just, we had to see the family, you know what yeah. I mean? Because you guys are a family now. It's just, every night, you know, we always say, Liam, it's one more episode, then you can go to bed. And it's like, okay, well, I want to watch the other one. It's like, okay, watch the other one. Oh, that makes me want to cry. <laughs> Compared to before Corner Gas to now, how has your life kind of changed in terms of going about your day-to-day -day business? You know. It's, it's, it's changed in, in a nice way. And it's not, I think it's because it's Canadian and it's because we're such a, uh, I think, an approachable show and, and the, the characters are so approachable. It's just really friendly. Still haven't gotten used to the looks when people, I was walking down the street in uh, Vancouver and this old, older gentleman just put his arm around me and kissed me on the top of my head and walked away. I'm assuming it's because of the show. <laughs> Thank you, Seamus, uh, Matt Marcy. Good morning, guys. Fred Awanek and Brett Butt are with us uh, this morning. Brent Leroy, what would he be doing five years from now? He w he'll be doing the same thing. Yeah, what does he think he he'll be doing? He thinks he's going to be a pro wrestler. He thinks he's going to take a shot at being a pro wrestler. <laughs> he's still got a chance at that. <laughs> yeah, he wants to kind of reinvigorate the old Calgary Stampede wrestling. <laughs> Doesn't pan out. We've been hanging out in the Ruby all morning with the cast of Corner Gas, and, and here we go. Fred Awana, Eric Peterson, Brent Butt, Lauren Cardinal, Tara Spencer Nairn, Nancy Robertson, Gabe Miller, and Janet Wright. Thanks so much to everybody, the cast here of Corner Gas. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Canada. Canada. Thank you, thank you, Canada. Boy, Jeff, you have to say thank you from both Seamus and I to have the whole cast there on the set of well, Quarter Gas. It's pretty amazing. I can honestly say that the one time Bev and I were on it, I've walked down the street and somebody said, that's the guy from Quarter Gas. <laughs> that's the guy from Quarter Gas. Okay, no, but did they go for it? Yes, they went for it, Seamus. Man, does that bald guy have to do a cameo and everything? Hey, Brent. Hey, Dave. Brent, can you hear me? Oop. Corner Gas wasn't created from the outset with the notion of having cameos on it. It just kind of developed, and then we, people seemed to like it, and we enjoyed it, so we ran with it. I think we all had fun. I don't know who had more fun. Whether they had more fun being there, or we had more fun having them. I feel blessed. This guy is the real deal. You know, we had the man from GLAD 
That's a guy who's just iconic from being in commercials, right? When he came on, people were very excited. The man from GLAAD was on your show. You know, when we had the Tragically Hip on, we had probably 700 people in the studio that morning, I think. I couldn't believe how many people claimed to work on the show that morning. Well, they really come out of the woodwork, don't they? <laughs> I just think it's a miracle that we, that we did this in the middle of the bald prairie. We made this unbelievable, iconic TV show, and we've had a complete blast for six years. Wow, that network will put anything on the air. One of the things I'm proudest of is that prior to Corner Gas, networks re weren't really looking at, they weren't seriously considering sitcom pitches. And the standard that I'd always heard in the business world, well, we, we can't do sitcoms in Canada, it doesn't work. And this was the first time, I think, that I can remember where somebody came along and said, you know what? Here's a whole bunch of money. Shoot it on film. Hire the best actors. If you get the right team and you get the right people together, magic can happen. <laughs> if you like that kind of thing. It's going to be a week like no other. There's going to be a lot of looking at things and saying, you know, this is the last time I'll pull up to the gas pumps. The last time I'll drive out to Rolo. Be the last time I uh, act in a scene. You know, there's, there's a lot of those lasts. Is the reality uh, setting in that uh, the end is near? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of mixed feelings about it. Gonna miss doing the show and miss the cast and the crew in Saskatchewan in general. Hey, guess who I need? The fuzz. Fuzz? And cut. Good. This is uh, an interesting piece of uh, Turner Gatt's history right here. You're gonna recognize this bush, those who have seen the first episode. You're by the bush. The surveillance bush. Fine. Be sure and let me know if all hell breaks loose out there. Roger that. It's only in the first episode and the last episode, that's it. Maybe I'll steal this on the last day. No, you can have that, yeah. You think? Right. And action. You're directing the last episode now. We're in the thick of it. How is this? particular episode different from any any of the other ones what would this being the last one you know we've got uh, a lot left to do i mean if there's three more filming days there's still three more days to get through of you know working it out and getting it done and action you're on there that's good oh perfect perfect all right let's shoot you hear that perfect yeah okay so when you're done with the cooler you can just kind of to lock up then Wait, where are you going? Okay, then, Robert. Get back here. Brent Leroy and Brent Buss are very similar. Eerily similar. Basically, because I didn't really uh, put a lot of faith in my acting chops, I thought, I don't know how well I can act. So I better make this guy respond to situations exactly the way I would. Yeah, very, very similar. I've had a ton of fun doing Corner Gas. This has been a blast. Corner Gas had some authenticity to it because we weren't trying to be anything. We just, you know, other than funny, that was it. And it's fantastic the way that people have responded so warmly to the show. So this is the last scene that we're shooting, interior Corner Gas. It's gonna be a tough one. All right, here we go. Ready and action. Oh, come on, give me a hint, I won't tell. Are you a spy? I prefer the term secret agent. Look, if I wanted people to know, they'd know. And cut. It's good. Check the gate. Anything you want to say to our fans directly? There's some of our fans right there. Hi, magic guys. Box. If you were to say something to the folks watching, what would you say? I would say I love you, and thank you so much for... Uh, coming along on the Dog River ride with us. It's been amazing, and you've all been amazing. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. You can't, David. And thank you guys very much. Thanks for liking me. <laughs> oh, I'd thank everybody, too. I'm, it's my ambition to thank everybody in person who's watched and liked this show. <laughs> it's been the thrill of my life. Well, you're making about 70 now. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be other thrills, dear.
the walker. <laughs> so would you. Right on. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching for six years, and we'll see you down the road. Thank you very much for all your love and support. It's been a, an awesome ride. Sometimes we forget that we're doing it for people, and that's our job is to entertain. And I guess I'd say thank you so much for supporting the show and allowing me to do what I love to do. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I, uh, I just, I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. It's been a pleasure and an honor, and um, stay well. I want to thank Brent, fearless leader. You know, you could have done anything Monday nights, and the fact that you uh, chose to sit down with us for a half hour. One and a half million of you? That was uh, pretty impressive, so thanks. All right. Thanks, Everybody gets one jar of cheese with. Yeah. <laughs>